And for our next story, we stay in England. Hey, Mr. Asshole! Oh, no. <laughs> Here, what do you get if you cross an elephant with a mouse? I don't know. What do you get if you cross an elephant with a mouse? <laughs> Blooming great holes in the skirting board. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. <clears throat> very funny. Hey, uh, here, Mr. Asshole, got another one. Here, what's got six heads, 92 feet, it's, it's five inches long, and it's got red, white, and blue stripes all over it. I don't know. What has got six heads, 92 feet, is five inches long, and has red, white, and blue stripes all over it? I don't know. But there's one crawling up the back of your neck. <laughs> oh, get off. Get off. Here's a short story called A Spade Full of Earth from the country bordering on Wales, the Shrewsbury area. Some people pronounce it Shrewsbury, and some call it Shrewsbury. There's a famous school there called Shrewsbury, and there's an earl called the Earl of Shrewsbury. But some people in the town say Shrewsbury. You call it what you like. I might call it both of those names as I go along. The town's in the county of Shropshire, and that's written as Salop for short, just to make you even more mixed up. The point of all this is that many years ago, so I'm led to believe, there lived a giant one of the biggest varieties of giants there was, and certainly one of the nastiest. He didn't like anybody or anything, but he particularly didn't like the town of Shrewsbury. Now, Shrewsbury had never done anything to harm the giant. What could they have done? There were no aeroplanes or big guns in those days, so they left him well alone. But for some reason, the giant really hated Shrewsbury and all its people, from the mayor downwards. He couldn't stand the thought of all those happy people leading normal lives in that pleasant town. The giant used to sit and brood and grumble to himself and try to think of what awful thing he could do to them. And at last, he thought of something awful enough. He would take a great spadeful of earth and dump it down so that it would dam up the River Severn. The idea delighted him. That'll do it. That'll teach him. The river will overflow and drown them all. The mayor, the policeman, the postman, the lot of them. That'll be the end of Shrewsbury. <laughs> Not a very nice giant. Off he went to get the biggest spade he could find. And that was a very big spade indeed. When it was full of earth, it was so heavy that even the mighty giant staggered under its weight. But he was determined to carry out his dreadful plan. So off he set. Now, the weather wasn't so good, and up where his head was, there was an awful lot of cloud. The result was that he got lost, and he ended up not at Shrewsbury, but somewhere near Wellington. It was getting dark as well as cloudy, and the giant was nearly worn out with carrying that great spadeful of earth. After he'd gone on a little further, he met a cobbler with a sack on his back. When I say he met the cobbler, what I mean is that he nearly trod on him. The cobbler was on his way home to Wellington, and in the sack were boots and shoes belonging to all his customers in Shrewsbury, and they all had to be mended. The giant called out to the cobbler. Hey, you! You down there! How far is it to Shrewsbury? The cobbler looked up and up and up until his head nearly came out of its socket and his eyeballs went right back. What he eventually saw was not a pretty sight. The scowling, red, bad-tempered face of the giant. The cobbler didn't like the look of him at all. He reminded him of those ugly statues you sometimes see at the top of old buildings. Gargoyles, they're called. And what would you want to go to Shrewsbury for? Said the cobbler. The giant roared. I'll tell you what for. Do you see this great spade full of earth? I'm going to dump it in the River Severn and dam it up and drown everybody in Shrewsbury. The mayor and everyone else. I don't like Shrewsbury, understand? Now that idea was even less attractive to the cobbler than the giant was. We can't have that, he thought. We can't let him do away with all those people. It's such a nice town, and they're all my customers too. He put down his sack, and he said to the giant, Oh, you're a long way off Shrewsbury. You won't get there tonight, nor tomorrow night neither. Oh, you work that out, roared the giant. Well, said the cobbler, I, I just came from Shrewsbury, and it's such a long journey that I've worn out dozens of pairs of shoes. Just look at this lot. 
and he opened the sack and poured out all the boots and shoes that he was going to repair, everyone full of holes. This really shook the giant. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, that's done it, that has. I can't go no further, I'm fair wore out already. I can't carry this great spateful of dirt no more. I'm only human after all. Well, the cobbler couldn't agree with the last part, but he said, Well, it's uh, a long way from here, I'm afraid. He kept his fingers crossed that the giant wouldn't catch sight of Shrewsbury, which was in fact just a little distance away. But the giant was too cross and tired to notice anything. I don't know. I reckon I just better drop this lot right here and get off home. The cobbler said nothing but kept his fingers crossed. The giant made up his mind. He got that spadeful of earth and dumped it down right where he stood. He scraped his boots on the spade and trudged back across the border. He was never seen or heard of in Shropshire again. And if you think this is just another fairy story that someone made up, well, if you go to Shrewsbury, you can see the great mound of earth that the giant dumped. It's called Rekin Hill. And close to it is a smaller hill called Urkall Hill. And that's where the giant scraped the dirt off his boots. Well, that was a gentle story. Let's have something a bit more exciting. Hey, oh. <laughs> Mr. Admiral, here, do you like those knock-knock stories? Which knock-knock stories? Well, you know, I say knock-knock, and you say who's there. Oh, uh, yes, yes, I know, yes. They're quite funny, yes. Yeah, well, here's one for you, isn't here. Knock-knock. Who's there? Amos. Amos who? Amos Keto. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, I like that. Not, you want it? Knock, knock. Who's there? Anna. Anna who? And another mosquito. <laughs> I wish you'd go away, really. All right, well, look, just, just, yeah, I will. Just one more then, look. Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? Oh, don't cry, it's only a game. <laughs>